Okay. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties was coupled with coupled with everything else. Okay. So the question was raised about, hey, can you do a circuit with two batteries? So I won't ask you for questions yet. We'll just do a circuit with two batteries, and then we can worry about more questions. Uh, so okay. So we get a choose your own adventure. So uh, I just have to be careful not to put too many things in, because because the, the the tendency I have is. Oh, once you have the the kind of the process down, you can just replot. You can extend it to however messy a circuit looks. So, so my tendency is to make it overly complicated. Uh, so, but I don't want to do one that you already have. So let me think. How many batteries do you want? Don't say zero or one. Really? That's that's the best you could come up. Okay, two. You said two. I'll do two. Uh, should we put them in series or parallel? Let's do three. Let's do three. I changed my mind. You're right. Three is a better. Let's do something like this. I don't know. Let's do something like that. And uh, mm, let's do this. That looks good. Okay. What else do we want in here? Some resistors. Okay. How many resistors do we want? Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen here. Two in parallel. Okay. Let's say, okay, let's do two in parallel. We'll put them right here. There's one in parallel. Let's do the second one in parallel. We'll do something like that. Uh, sure, why the heck not? Let's give it a third one. Let's go like this. And uh, mm -hmm. okay, we'll do this. There. We'll put that there and we'll put this one here. There. That looks like a lovely drawn circuit. Yeah. Okay. Should we do this in variables or do you want numbers? I guess let's do numbers today. We'll do some numbers. Uh, what, what kind of numbers do you want? What, what's your favorite battery? Nothing. Nobody has a favorite battery. I had to replace a smoke alarm yesterday. Okay, so let's go nine volt. Uh, I don't know. What do you want to make this battery down here? Two. Two. Two volts it is. Two volts. With this one. I don't care. The numbers don't matter to me. Five. Okay. Just remember that I won't know the final answer now any more than you will. Right? What the the answer that we get together is the answer because uh, I don't know what it is. We're making up random numbers here. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Well, everybody seems to be in a really talkative mood, so I'll just make this ten ohms. I'll make this one two ohms. Uh, let's say let's make that one five ohms. And uh, okay, you get a choice on this one. Seven. Seven. Okay. Oh, we should have gone for all primes. Oh, nuts. We'll try that next time. Okay, so we have our circuit. Go. How many junctions? Let's ask ourselves this. How many junctions are we dealing with here? How many, how many connections do we really have? It's always a good question to ask yourself. Oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong question. Let's start from the top. Number one, draw a circuit. Check. Number two, let's choose some directions for currents. Let's do that. Maybe I shouldn't say go yet. Excuse me. So let's choose some current directions. Let's choose, choose eyes. Okay. I don't know. Do we want to choose them together or do you want to choose them separately? Together? Okay. Together. Top line. Let's look at the top branch here. Incidentally, um, sorry, I might use the term every once in a while, but branch, branch tends to be used to indicate a line between two junctions. Right. So for example, I'll highlight one junction, say here, actually I shouldn't even make it that small. I should say here's one junction and here's a second junction. So I can refer to this as the top branch, or at least I, I said that. That's what I mean, is that this, this line is a connection between two junctions. And so I, I refer to this as the top branch, something like that. Then you have like the middle branch, the lower branch, and then you know, yada, yada, yada. So uh, let's say the top branch, which way do you want current to go? You want it to go left to right or right to left? 
Left to right. Okay, so we are going to choose for it to run left to right like this. And uh, let's see, how do I want to label this? Because we need labels for these currents. I am going to call this I7. So I'm going to call this I7 simply because it runs through the 7 ohm resistor. And there's only one 7 ohm resistor. So I know that this will, again, that's just my, that, that's, that's just me. So I'm going to label this one I7 to remind myself that this is the current going through the 7 ohm resistor. Of course, this is also the current that's going through the 9 volt battery and the 5 volt battery, but, but yeah. Okay. How about this middle one? Uh, which way do you want the current to be running in this branch, this middle left branch? You want it right to left or left to right? It doesn't matter. Choose. Left to right. Okay, left to right, so we'll go this way. Uh, I don't know. What do you want to call this one? Uh, I'll call that one I not. I know that seems weird, but yeah, we'll do that. Okay, we have this. Uh, we have this section as well. So we have a branch right here to here. Right, there's a junction on the left side and the right side. Um, so for the top section through that five ohm resistor, which way do you want the current to run? Same direction. Okay, same direction. Okay, we'll go this way. I'll call that I five. And uh, just for kicks, I'll, I'll run this one this way, I2. Right. Again, I want to show you, the direction doesn't matter. In fact, I can guarantee you we're going to get a negative sign somewhere. Right. We're going to get through this whole thing, we're going to get negative current, and that's okay. Right. So, uh, and lastly, we got to do the bottom line. Um, matters not to me. Let's go left to right, or right to left. Boy, I don't even know my directions anymore. Let's do it that way. Right. So now we have labeled all of our currents. Now we should double check that we have them all. Uh, right here we get a split, so I've got those labeled. We've got a split here. Now right here, this whole thing, uh, let's see here, what would that be equal to? I gotta think about that for a second. This whole thing is a junction. So I have current going in, out. I have this one labeled. We have, okay, I think we're good. Okay. Now we got number three, step three. Let's label our highs and lows. Okay. So I feel like we should be singing like Panic at the Disco or something. You know. High, high hopes for living. I don't know why. I just say high and lows, and that's the first song that popped in my head. Okay. Uh, so based on our current direction, we had from right to left through this 10 ohm resistor. That would tell us that the left, right side is at the high, the left side is at the low. Of course, the battery, long bar is high, short bar is low, so I could go through and do all the battery stuff real fast. High, low. For the seven ohm resistor, the current's coming in from the left, going to the right. So I'll go ahead, right, left side is high, right side is low. And same thing, two ohm resistor, we're going from right to left, so right side is high and left side is low. And 5 ohm is from left to right. So again, I'm just going through it based on, first of all, the batteries. Batteries tell you which side is the high and low side. Resistors, you use the current direction to say which side is high and low. So you got highs and lows. Highs. Let me know if I'm going too fast, or I don't want to be talking at you or anything, but I mean, like, let me know if I'm going too fast, or. So, when you're picking, like, if the current's going through the battery, do you just, like, look at the junction? How do you know? I'm so confused on how to, like, determine where there are currents. Oh, we're, uh. I'm going to say that each branch gets its own current, but then you could. Uh, da, 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 da. Essentially, uh, I want to say each branch gets its own current. Um, the, the, I think, if I may, 
I think the problem area is probably this spot. Is that right? Or Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so this top branch, the, okay, so the multiple batteries with one current, uh, the question would be, I know we've already talked about this, so I, you, um, I'm trying to think of a better way of stating it. I'm trying to think of a better way of stating it because I know I've already said, hey, is there, if there's no junctions, is there anywhere for the current to split at? But I don't know if that helps. So uh, think of this, think the current as uh, being a, a hose, water, okay? If there is no split in the hose, can the water go anywhere except through the hose? Because batteries don't count on the transfer. Oh, no, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. The batteries, just like a resistor, the batteries are, are, are like any other element. The current going in has to be equal to the current coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure that's based on some electrochemical thing. So, you know, if, a if a, an electron gets produced at the anode, it has to recombine at the cathode. That, so I, that's kind of the idea. And let me know if I got the anode and cathode mixed up because I'm forever going to be screwed up on that. Yeah. Just, you know, there are some things that mitosis and meiosis, forget it. Like, I know one's cell splitting, I know the other one's like what, gamete production, but I don't remember which one's which anymore. Continually and continuously, I have to look it up every time. One of them is without cessation, whereas the other one is. So if you continually do something, it's without breaks, whereas continuously is with breaks. But I will continually or continuously get this wrong. Probably continuously. Yeah. Yes, so batteries treat it just like any other circuit element. The current going in has to be equal to the current coming out. Is that helpful? Okay. Okay, so now we are at this, we're at a position where we can now apply Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law to get the number of equations. We see, oh yeah, it's always good to remind ourselves how many unknowns we have. And so we go through and count the blue letters, which are really crappy contrast. Uh, but it looks like we have five unknowns. That makes zero sense, okay. But I'm glad I got it. Sorry, the switch for this from the board is the one that turns off the board lights, which I would have wired in exactly the opposite. Well, whatever. Okay. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five currents. We have five I's. So, and it's always, oh, excuse me, that's step four. We have step four, we have five currents, five unknowns. Which means how many equations are we going to need? Survey says five. Okay. Now, again, I said, hey, the best bet, best bet is to try to apply Kirchhoff's current law as much as possible and then use the extra, the, the, the equations you still need at the end, go ahead and apply KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Uh, so Kirchhoff's current law, we have to find junctions, and essentially we have three. We have one right here on the left-hand side. We have a second one in the center of our circuit, right here. And we have one, since there's just a regular wire right here, there's no like other circuit elements or anything else going on. Um, since this is just a straight out wire, this whole thing is the third junction. Which means how many times can we actually apply Kirchhoff's current law? We have three junctions. Twice. 
The last equation is if you have three junctions, you can apply Kirchhoff's law twice. If you apply it three times, you've written down a redundant equation somewhere. Which junctions do you want to use? There's no wrong answers here. The one by I not? Okay, so we'll use this left junction. Let's go ahead and write that down. Well, the current going in, so we go through, okay, I10. So I10 is going in. So I'll say, I'll, I'll call the left hand side the in currents and the right hand side the out currents. So for good gravy figures, at least I was looking at the screen. Man, I am. You know, sometimes I, I say like, oh yeah, today I'm just scatterbrained, but it seems like I just show up scatterbrained every day, which means that I shouldn't be announcing that I'm scatterbrained. I should be announcing that I'm clear-minded. Like, hey, today I'm so clear-minded. <sighs> yeah. There we go. Okay. And just to boot, my tablet's also dying at the same time. So life is, what the heck? Oh, come on now. Okay, you're still there. Okay. Do that as well. Okay, so I'll use the left-hand side to call it the IN. So I'll say the right-hand side is the outs. And we see that for, uh, so we're already using a lot of numbers. I'm going to call this junction A, and we'll call this one B, and we'll call this one C. That's just so that you know we know which equation goes with which junction. So for junction A, let's see if I can do it this way instead. That way I'm not turning around. Uh, for junction A, so I'll just put it uh, again. This is Greg, but I like to remind myself. So I'm looking at junction A. We have an I naught or an I ten going in, and we have I naught plus I seven coming out. We're done with that one. What's another junction? What other junction do you want to use? B. B. Okay. So junction B, go ahead. You can write it down probably faster than I can. We have I not coming in and I two and out is I five. There you go. That's all I have to say about that. The water coming into a junction has to be the water coming out of the junction. Unfortunately, the last one we're um, not going to get anything informative out of. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, you get, uh, yeah, we're not going to get anything informative out of because it's redundant. It's an excess equation. The other way to say that is if we use equation C, you get a redundancy because charge is conserved. We're, we started off with the idea that charge is conserved that allows us to write down these equations using KCL. If we write down all three junctions and try to use them, it will tell us that charge is conserved. We'll get zero equals zero, which we already knew because that's our basis for writing down the equations in the first place. So unfortunately we're stuck. Now we have to move on to KVL. So, we are going to have to choose three loops, walk around the loops, and write down the equations. Yes? Wait, can you show what the equation for C would have been? Sure, the equation for C, if you wanted. Uh, let's see, the equation for C would be something like, okay, we have I7 going in. We have I7 going in. And we have I5 going in. And coming out, we would have I2 and I10. So it'd be something like this. 
is what we would have. I don't know if you can visually see it here. We put I5 here, the I2s cancel out, you get I7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can almost visually see it. If you took equation B as in boy and put it into equation C as in cat, you end up with equation A as in apple. I'll say that again. If you take equation B and put it into equation C, you immediately get equation A. Okay. That's why you can only use two of the three equations, because if you do the third, then you end up having a redundancy. Two of the equations end up being the same. You can see, so I take I5, put it in here, the I2s cancel out, and I end up with uh, this equation on the top. I saw that hand up. Yeah. So if we don't take the other direction for I10, would there be any current coming to A? If you choose the other direction for I10, yeah. then yes, you're right, you would have no current going into location A, which would immediately tell you that one of the currents has the wrong direction and you're going to end up with a negative sign somewhere. Yeah. But again, once you make the choice, stick with it through the entire problem. In fact, I already know I7 is going to have a negative sign. That's partially off of experience, and that's also partially looking at which are the stronger batteries. Well, if you notice that top branch has a nine volt battery, the middle branch only has a two volt battery. If I set these things head to head, the nine volt's gonna push on the two volt. So I already know, like looking at it, I know that I7 is gonna have a negative sign. But we can go through and find it. We'll go through and find it. We'll find it's negative. It doesn't affect anything, it just means at the end of the day, we'll, we conceptually know it's running the opposite direction. So yes, yeah. Other questions? Like, could you still be able to write an equation for A? Then? Yeah, you could still write an equation for A. You can still treat the equation, sub and solve, and do everything just fine. And you would have a zero for I and equals all that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you get something like that, if you have zero equals a sum of out, you can just say, oh, right away you can say, I chose the wrong direction for one of these. That's okay, it'll work out. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's why I say, hey, unless you're told in the problem what direction a current is running, you are free to choose. Okay. And, and that choice will not affect the, the end result. So yeah, there's the equation for I, uh, for part C, or look, junction C. But I'm going to throw it out because I don't want to use it. Right? We already have that, that relationship. But that's also what I mean. Thank you for asking it. That's also what I mean is sometimes the redundancy isn't immediately apparent. If I just look at the surface, these are three different equations. But I can use two to get the third one. So there is still a redundancy there. Or it might be, it might not even be that clear. Sometimes it's like, oh, I can use these four equations to get the fifth equation. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Okay. So we are on to KC, or excuse me, KVL, the loop rule. And so because we know we have five unknowns, we've got two from the junction rule, we're gonna have to go through and do three from the loop rule. I don't know, what loops do you wanna choose? I'll choose one, I'll make life easy. I'm gonna do the small loop containing five and two. So, let me get rid of, okay, so we have those junctions. I'm gonna just get rid of the circles on the junctions. Right here, there we go. Uh, let's see here, maybe orange. It's always nice to have different color pens if you can, you know, or color pencils or chalk, yeah. just for this purpose. So then, you know, like, okay, I label currents in blues and junctions in greens. And I'll do loops in orange. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna do one loop and I'll just do this small center loop and I'm just gonna go uh, clockwise around it. So maybe starting here, you know, in this upper left corner, and I'll walk clockwise around the loop. 
And the first thing, incidentally, it doesn't matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise. And you say, why does Greg always go clockwise? Have it. You don't have to go clockwise. You could go counterclockwise. You could, yeah, it, it's a fielder's choice. You can go clockwise on some of them and counterclockwise on others. You don't even have to go the same direction. I'll go clockwise on this. And you notice that I hit the five ohm resistor and that is a jump or a drop. It's a drop. What do our labels say? Remember, we went through and labeled the high and low sides. The whole point of doing that is so that we can say, hey, it's a drop. We go from a high potential to a low potential. Follow what you have on the page. Okay. So I go from a high to a low potential. So what I'll do is I'll write in V drops. I'll put drops on the left-hand side. I'll put jumps on the right-hand side. So this, this is a drop across the 5 ohm resistor. And so I will write that as I5 times my 5 ohm resistor. Right, I'm taking advantage of Ohm's law here. The drop across the resistor is the current through the resistor times the resistor value. I keep walking, I keep walking, and across the two ohm resistor, do I get a jump or a drop? Are you telling me, do I go from positive to negative or negative to positive? Going clockwise. I go from a high potential side to a low potential side. So I have a second drop. That's fine. So I'll put here plus I have I2 times my two ohm resistor. And now I am back at the original location. So I had no jumps in that loop. Which again, as Ben pointed out, this immediately tells you that one of my current directions is wrong. Either I5 has to be negative or I2 has to be negative. We don't know which, that's okay. It'll work out at the end. The, the, the warning, don't get to this point and say, okay, I've got to change a direction on my current. Because if you change a direction on your current, that means you change the high and low sides on your circuit, which means you have to go back and change your ins and outs. So you say, oh, I know one of these is negative. I'll change it now. That means you will have to change these equations as well. So that's why I say, when you make a choice, stick with it through the entire problem. Okay. Don't try to fix it halfway because you will forget to change something. OK, what else do you want to do? What, what's another loop you want to do? I took the easy one. Okay, okay. Do you want to do all the outside or do you want to go in the inside? Okay, so we'll do outside. Okay, so I'll call this one the out loop. You know, entire outside. And uh, yeah, let's just start at junction A and let's walk around. Do you want to go clockwise or counterclockwise? You want to go clockwise? No. Okay. No, I don't. It doesn't matter, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So let's go clockwise. We start walking, and immediately we hit our 9 volt battery, but we're going from the high to the low side, so that's a drop. So I'll put 9 here, the 9 volts. I keep walking. I hit the 5 volt battery, which is another drop. So I put a 5 in there on the left hand side. I realize my head is probably in the way too big of a head. You know, the terrible thing about this is we're going to write down all these equations. I'm going to go to the next page and I won't have those equations to look at. It's going to be terrible. You guys luck out. You guys have pieces of paper in front of you. Maybe I should have done this on the board. Okay. I right, keep going. We hit the 7 ohm resistor. It again is a drop. We go from the pause, the high side to the low side. So again, we have a drop of I7 
times the 7 ohms. Keep walking. We're on the outside loop. We keep walking. We keep walking. We get another drop across I-10. So all called, or excuse me, resistor 10. The resistor 10. The 10 ohm resistor. There we go. So I'll call that the I-10 times 10 ohms. And we are back at our starting spot. So again, we, we recognize that not only did I choose the wrong direction for one of these currents, I-2 or I-5, we again notice I've got a direction wrong for one of these currents, probably. Let's see here, because this goes negative. So, yeah, so I've got one of these two is probably negative. Yeah, one of these two is going to be negative. That's okay, we keep going. Last one, what do you want to do? We did the outside one, we did the in-in one. Yeah, I'll call that the, the, the one I did, I'll call it the in-in. It's the inside circuit, inside the circuit. Top half. Okay, so let's just do the top. So again, we'll start at point A, and we already know, hey, this top branch, so we'll do the, um, I like it, we'll, we'll just call it the top. So I'm going to walk through, I get the 9 volts, the 5, and the 7, just like I originally had. The 9 plus the 5 plus I7 times the 7 ohm resistor. And now, again, I guess I'm going clockwise. I didn't give you a choice. So I'm going to force a habit. So now I'm going to, let's go ahead and we'll go on the top part of that inside. So we'll, so now if I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'll go through the 5, and now we see that that 5 ohm is not a drop, but a jump. I go from the low potential side to the high potential side. And so this will now represent, I'll put the equal sign, I have my 5 I5 times my 5 ohm resistor. I keep walking, I am now through I5. I keep walking, I keep walking, and the 2 volt battery is a jump. So I'll put it's plus 2 over here. And we're back at the beginning. So now I have five equations. I've got two from KCL, the junction rule. I've got three from KVL, the loop rule. That should now be sufficient for me to apply, sub and solve, and get the answers. I can't emphasize enough. Physics has now officially stopped. Right there, once you write down these equations, so long as you don't have any redundancies, physics has officially stopped. Math will now take over. Yes? If you decide to, you could choose a different path that takes you through the 2 ohm resistor rather than the 5 ohm resistor. Yes. I don't have to choose every path, I just have to choose one path that will get me back to the starting spot. So yes, uh, you could have equally, I chose this inner loop, um, we chose the outside loop, and we chose this top loop. But you could have just as easily chosen, say, the top line and gone through the bottom part of that inner loop to get back at the position. That's perfectly fine, you could have done that. You could use that equation for the sum and solve, and yes, you'll get the same result. The trick is, is you just need five, in, we say five independent equations, five equations that are not redundant. Yep. Unfortunately, at this point, now we have to sub and solve and just go at it. So I say physics has officially ended, but that doesn't mean. Right now we have. 
goal to actually get a solution. Uh, give me just a second here because I don't know what the most efficient route's going to be. Uh, I know how I would do it in my office, which is cheating and using uh, a branch of math. I think I mentioned it, linear algebra. So I know how to cheat, set this up in linear algebra, and solve it in about 10 seconds. But that's not how you know how to do it. So I should do it the way you guys know how to. Yes? Uh, I will. I can post the video on Moodle if you want to see how to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'll post the video. I think I, I might have. I'll double check to make sure it doesn't mention like derivatives or anything like that. But I had to record some videos over last summer, and there's at least one or two that might show you how to do it. Okay. So I'll, I'll see if I can pull those out and post them for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, the, the general term is you use matrix matrices and you invert the matrix to find the answer. So you can do that inversion by hand, which takes time. Or if you want your TI 82s, 83s, 86s, they do it manually. They do it for you. Is that a question or you just? Yeah. Okay, so there's a way, real fast way to do it with a calculator essentially. Or MATLAB. If you're from MATLAB, do you guys use MATLAB? I didn't know for sure. I mean, it's available to you if you ever need it, but yeah, I just I didn't know. Okay, so we have to sub and solve. Let's see here. Uh, so I2 and I5, so we can put it there. Then how can we get, there's an I5 there, but that's related to I7, and I7, so it gets I10. I don't think there's a good way of doing this otherwise. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so which, uh, which one's the easiest? If I put this here, <laughs> if I put this here, I put this here, so now I7 is in terms of I5, I2 is in terms of I5, I10 is in terms of I7, which can be in terms of I5. Maybe it would be better to do I7. No, it's not because then I know. Okay. Uh, do you want to find I7 or I5 first? Seven. Seven? All right. So, sorry, I, I had to look. I, I, there's no way around it. We just have to plug and solve. So this is again why I say at this point everything is algebra. Right? We're not done with the problem, but yeah, unfortunately we, we, we created the problem. We should probably solve it at least once. So we got to sub and solve five equations. What I'm going to do, I'll walk you through it, and then we'll actually do it. We said let's solve for i7, right? Yeah. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two equations to get rid of i naught. You say, why did you choose that? Notice down here. Notice down here. I do not have I naught in any of these loop equations. Which means I don't, I can't use any of the loop equations to get rid of I naught. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this equation, the bottom one from B, Sub it into the top one to get rid of I naught. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Now, conceptually, I'll, I'll write it down so we have it. Unfortunately, I got to go to a next slide and that kind of thing. So, the first thing I'm going to do is substitute B into A to get rid of I naught. And now, the next thing I need to do is use these three equations to get a current in terms of I7. So the first one I see is that I7 is related to I5. So I can use this bottom equation to get it in terms of I, to get I5 equals blah plus I7. I see this one, this middle one, I can get I10 in terms of I7. So I've got three of the equations that I need now. I've got I10 in terms of I7 from this, this middle equation. I've got I5 in terms of I7 from this bottom equation. And if I want to get I2 in terms of I7, I'll have to use my results of the bottom equation to get an I5. Now I'll walk through that, but I'm just telling you before I do it, I want to tell you, okay, this is the pattern I'm going to take.
Now, I don't know what we're going to get. I just know that that's the path that will work. We'll get I7. Once we have I7, we can back sub to get I all the rest of them. Okay. Once you get one current, usually once you have the one current, then you just back sub to get everything else. Is it okay if I change slides? You're going to have to help me with a little bit of it because I'm, I'm. Okay, uh, so we get I10 equals. I10 plus I2. Sorry, I10 plus I2 equals. Okay. okay. <clears throat> You're going to have to help me. So the first one, the one that I can actually remember, is I'm going to take equation B, junction B equation, and sub it into junction A equation. And you're going to end up with something like I10 plus I2 equals I5 plus I7. Is that what you got? You take the junction B equation, you substitute it into the equation from junction A to get rid of I0. And I just moved I2 to the other side. So you should have, you probably had a negative I2, and then I just moved it to the other side. For no other reason than it helped me memorize what I needed to write down. Is that what you got, Court? You guys, you guys all got that? So we said we want to keep I7. I7 is our target. Stay on target. Which means we got to get the rest of the equations for in terms of I7. Uh, okay, so that top loop was 9 plus 5. Excuse me, let me backtrack here. Uh, let's start off with uh, this bottom equation. Okay, so let's see, we've got 14 plus 2, okay, I think I got it. So that, that uh, bottom equation, I had 9 plus 5, which gives me 14, plus I7 times 7 equals I5 times 5 plus 2. That was the very last equation that we had, and I just I added the, the five and the, 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 the five and the nine together. Let's go ahead. Let's get now I5 in terms of I7. So I gotta move the two over, and I have to divide by five. So I get something that says 12 plus I7 times seven over 5 equals I5. I guess I should ask, do you want to run through the 15 minutes of algebra? Is that okay? I take your leave it? Okay. I mean, I know that a physicist would have a trial. I mean, like, me as a physicist, I want to say, okay, the physics is done, just pack up the math and keep going. But I also know that that's sometimes not as easy as what it sounds like. <laughs> so, okay, I don't mind doing that. I just, I, I just realized, like, we're going to spend probably, like, 15 minutes doing this real fast. Which I'm okay with, as long as you're okay with it. I'm not wasting your time. Okay. So there we go. We can now take that. We have this equation. We're going to want to, we, we're done with that one. We're going to want to substitute it up here at some point for I5. And that's where that equation is going to go when we're ready to do that substitution. Okay. I'm not going to do it yet. I want to get the other ones, but we have that one. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, that middle equation with something like 14 plus I7 times 7. Let me think here. That's uh, da, 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 da. Was it uh, equals I10? Excuse me. I can't remember if it had I10 in it. Yeah, it had plus I1010. So this was plus I10 times 10 equals 0. Again, I want I10 in terms of I7. So pretend that you know I7, you want to get I10 by itself. So I'm going to just move it over and divide by negative 10. Because I got that, that 10 ohms sitting right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe it won't take us 15 minutes. 
So we have 14 plus I7 times 7 divided by, put the negative 10 there, equals I10. And again, I guess uh, if it's okay, it's okay if I move that negative sign to the numerator. I just, I just know I'm going to lose it if I, if I leave it in the denominator. I'm going to move it to the numerator so I get a negative 14 and a negative 7i7. So I'll, I'll just do that. I, that's Greg. Greg doesn't like negative signs in the denominator. I am biased against negative signs in the denominator. I don't know why. Except for my proclivity of dropping them. Now, okay, again. We have an equation for I10. We're going to put that one in up here. So we've got those two done. We've got I10, we've got I5. The last one is we need I2. So we go and look at the last equation that we have yet to use. And we have it. I'll draw a line in here, which is really bad. Okay. I promise I only had one cup of coffee. I've only had three quarters of a cup of coffee today. No, I promise that's that's my straight line when I'm not caffeinated. I sometimes worry. Uh, the last equation, if I recall, was two i two plus five i five equals zero. Did I get that right? I guess I get back one. Two uh, yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see Greg's rationale for labeling the current with the same value as the resistor. It helps you remember which numbers go together. Right. That doesn't always work if you have more than one resistor of the same value, but you know this one just we chose numbers like that. So you say, wait, Greg, there's no I7s in here. And I say, yes. We are going to first of all get I2 in terms of I5. And then we're going to have to use this expression for I5 and substitute it in. Such is life. So let's go ahead. I get I2 equals negative 5 halves I5. So that's getting I2 in terms of I5. And now I'll substitute in the expression for I5. Sub that in. So we get I2 equals negative 5 halves times, oh, goody, goody, 12 plus I7 times 7, all divided by 5. Oh, goody, goody. At least that's nice. There's, there's small linings to clouds, there's silver linings to clouds. At least the fives cancel. It's something. It's very small something, but it's something. You see the five in the numerator here cancels the five in the denominator, so we can just. Uh, yeah. Um, no, okay, I'll scratch it. I'll just scratch it like that. Well, now we're done. Well, now we have everything we need. We have all of the non-I7 currents in terms of I7. Right, we've got I10 in terms of I7, we've got I5 in terms of I7, we have I2 in terms of I7. So the last thing that we need to do now is actually substitute in to that first equation. I fear I'm gonna run out of space, but... Uh, okay, mental snapshot, here we go. Take this to a new line. We have I10 plus I forgot already two two equals I5 plus I7. I7. Go back. Negative 14, 7, 10. So I10 is negative 14. Minus 7i7 seven over 10. 
parentheses in there, plus I2 was negative one half, parentheses, again, I don't remember, so let me take a 12, seven, something like 12, mm, I, uh, seven, I seven. And here's where Greg has to be careful. Here, let me put the two inside there, put the two inside. Let's make sure we get the signs right. Otherwise, I'm going to goof something up. Okay, they're both negative. So I'll put the negative sign here. Okay. Equals, uh, if I recall correctly, okay, this was something like five halves. No, that's not right. Excuse me. This is just 12 plus I7 over five. Seven I7 over five. Let's make sure that one's right. Uh, 12 I7 and seven over five. And last but not least, the easiest substitute, well, okay, it's not a substitution, but plus I7. I feel like we're balancing like concentration equations or something. You have to do sub and solve with that, like balancing concentration things. Yeah. How many, how many do you do? Like five? Have you done sub and solve on five? Yeah, for five years. Okay. So I'm not I'm not like out of the realm of possibilities here. Right. That's why you wanted to know how to do it with a computer. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I guess uh well, let's, uh, I guess we better get all the I7s on one side of the equation, get everything else. Uh, let's go through and multiply everything by 10, if that's okay. Because you see, uh, if I multiply everything by 10, I get rid of the fractions. So let's go ahead and multiply by 10 and just get rid of all those ugly fractions for right now, um, just to make our lives easier. So uh, I'll end up with something like, well, I shouldn't say like. Let's do the multiplication first. So I get minus 7i7 seven plus, now if I multiply by 10, then I got 5. So 12 times 5 is 60. So I get negative 60. And 7 times 5 is 35i7 equals uh, 24 plus 14 I7 plus I7. Okay, well, we're, we're uh, let's see here. Uh, seven plus 35, so we're up to 42. And we're gonna move those to the other side. Oh, did I miss something? Uh, yes, indeed. Hey, I should write in what I'm going to do. You know, like put in parentheses and not try to do it in my head. There we go. Even Greg is prone to forgetting things. Let's see, what would, I, what would I call that? I might call that a transcription error. If you ever see something like transcription error, if I write that somewhere, uh, what that means is that you forgot something. When you move from one line to the next line, you drop something. Usually it's a power or you write it in an extra negative sign or drop a negative sign or something. This would be what I call a transcription error. You haven't done anything wrong physically. You technically not doing anything wrong mathematically, but you just forgot something. It's probably the least outrageous of the errors that I've seen people do. Like that's like the low level, you know exactly what you're doing, you just forgot something. Yeah. Yep, okay, so we have negative uh, 42, negative 42, and we're gonna move those to the other side. So you end up with something, I'll do that first. We have 42 I7, plus 14 I7 plus 10 I7. Okay. So that's taking those two underlying things and moving it over to the right-hand side. I'll take the 24 and move it over to the left-hand side. 
So we have negative 14 minus 60, negative 14 minus the 60 minus the 24. And now you see that I7 is definitely going to be negative. I7 should definitely have been chosen to go the other way. Also, bear in mind in here, um, like those, those things that I said, like resistors in parallel, resistors in series, these numbers are coming from those combination rules. But it's not easy to see where, right? Like it's, it's hard to tell, like, how do I make the 7, 2, 5, and 10 turn into 42? Okay, but it's in there somewhere. And so these numbers are coming from those combined combining resistors in series and parallel rules. Uh, so what do we got? Uh, negative 84 plus another 14. So we're at 98. So we have something like negative 98 over here. Divided by uh, 52 plus 14 gives us uh, 66. There's something like 66 over here. And yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, we could simplify this, but there's a common factor of uh, certainly two. Uh, two gives you 33, 33 is prime, so I guess that's it. So you could take out the factor. No, 33 is not prime, there's three and 11 in there. Never mind. So it's uh, 98 divisible by 3. Uh, let's see, 9 plus 8 is 17, so it's not divisible by 3. Uh, and it's not divisible by 11. So the only common factor is 2. Right? If it's just divisible by 3, you add the terms together. And if the sum is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. Yeah, I, I, yeah, OK. There's some really weird ones for like 11, but I don't know them anymore. I used to know. OK, so we're done. Now we have the current for uh, I7, but fortunately, because we have all of these other expressions for the other currents, we're, we're now I will say that we're definitely done. Yes, you still have to back sub in to get the other currents, but I would say we have solved the system of equations. We have one current, the back sub I'll leave to you. So if you want to find I5, Right, I5 was given by, I'll write that one in. I5 was given by 12, put 12 fifths plus 7 fifths I7. So I just take this answer and I'll substitute it in there to get I5. Bear in mind, keep the negative sign on the back side. Okay, this equation. You know, this 12, this, this equation that we got, or any of those equations, assumes the direction that we originally chose for I5. Okay. So that's what I also mean. When you choose a direction, stick with it until the entire problem is solved. This is not the entire problem yet. You have not solved the entire problem. You found one current. You still need to use that negative sign when you sub in for all the other currents. Okay. This equation was written assuming one direction on I7. So when you put that in, make sure you keep that negative sign when you back sub. Okay. Now again, you're going to get a couple of more. So I7 is in the wrong direction. Uh, if I may, is it okay if we go off the screen for a second? Yeah. Going back here. So I7 is in the wrong direction. Um, I2 is also going to be in the wrong direction. And I have zero idea if I10 is in the right direction or not. Uh, no, I do. I2 will be negative, and I, I10 will also be negative. So we, try, we chose the wrong directions for I7, I2, and I10. I'm about, OK. I'm wishy-washy on I2, but my gut tells me we chose wrong on I2. I'm, I'm bulletproof on I7 because we've done it, and I'm definitely sure on I10. Okay. I'm about, I'm, I'm 
wishy-washy on an I2, but my gut told me that I2 should be going the wrong way as well. Is it? Okay, yeah. Looking at it, I'm like, yeah, it's got to be. I mean, I can't come up with the justification, but my gut tells me. Questions? Does that help out with the double battery and yay? Yeah. Incidentally, notice I didn't, I mean, the only thing that a battery does or having more than one battery, I mean, it, 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 in some sense, right here, if you notice that nine and five, I could have just replaced it with the 14 volt battery and nothing else would have changed in our problem. Right, instead of having two batteries in parallel, I could have replaced it with the sum of the two voltages. Because everywhere we had those, I just had nine plus 15, so I could have replaced those two batteries with one. Yeah. So uh, yes, you have the tools to expand not only to the, any number of resistors that you want, you can say any number of resistors and batteries. You approach it the same way as you would with a single battery. Other questions? So there's two things about it, of course. Again, I'll highlight. No, I don't know what I'll do on an exam. Um, but, uh, you know, there is something legitimate about saying, hey, Greg, is it worth an hour of my time during the exam just to sub and solve equations? Probably not. Yeah. But um, you still should be familiar with how to go through and do it. All right? Like, you're going to run across this stuff all the time. So um, am I going to give you a circuit like this and tell you to analyze it? I I should, I'll say fair game would be write down on equations that you could use to solve it. That is definitely fair game, right? Because I said, hey, once we get to these five equations, physics has stopped, algebra takes over. Right? So af after everything, yes, the homework has you sub into solving and giving the actual values. Okay? You need to be 100% bulletproof on getting to the equations, at least. Right? Because that's really where the physics stops. Cool. Well, I see no reason to keep you here for three minutes. Unless you want to do another problem. What are you laughing at me now? What? I've got sidewalk chalk. You guys can come by. You can get some sidewalk chalk. You can do these outside in the sun. Find a nice place to scare some people. No? The sidewalk in front of Lynn looks right for some physics problems. No? Stop by. I'll give you some. I'm dead serious. You can walk. I mean, you want to work outside practicing homework problems. I can give you some sidewalk talk. No problem. Okay, get out of here. Have a good weekend. I'll see you Wednesday? Is it Wednesday? Yep. Okay, I'll see you Wednesday.